So thank you, thank you all for coming in in this rainy afternoon. Well, anyway, most of you from Kerala must be used to this rains, but uh, for Delhi people, this is a little unusual that it, this continues for this long. And secondly, thank you for coming because this is a press conference that is specifically uh, addressing the issue of higher education in India. And in this current uh, atmosphere, where all of you are talking of uh, political alliances and unities and things like that, this may sound very uninteresting, but this, uh, this is uh, something that is very, very crucial for the future of our country. What is being done by the uh, government, this uh, Modi government, is that they are proposing a Higher Education Com Commission of India, replacing the existing University Grants Commission to monitor, regulate and conduct the system of higher education in India. Higher education is the backbone of any intellectual creative development of any country. Now tampering with higher education is actually tampering with the country's character at the present and the country's potential in the future. So that is why it's a very serious uh, issue as far as the CPIM is concerned. We think this is a damage that is not only purely momentary or only structural, but this is a damage that is being done to both the character and the future of India. That is why we have decided that this proposal is something that cannot be rushed through in Parliament like this government usually does. We would want a proper engaged discussion with all the stakeholders and higher education involves all stakeholders, I mean everybody in the country. And therefore, in this present form, if they are going to force the bill to be adopted in Parliament, we are going to oppose it. CPM will oppose it in the Parliament. If they are forcing it in this manner, we want a wider consultation for it. The reasons are clear. What is the government saying? Government is saying that the Uni University Grants Commission was established in 1956 when there were only 27 universities in the country. Today, the number of universities has grown up to 850. So therefore, a change in the system is required. But the basic point is that this growth from 27 to 850 happened under the UGC. So the fact that it could grow to this extent is actually not to discredit the UGC but actually to see that it has kept pace with the, with the years and development. But they are using this as the excuse to undermine the UGC. Behind this we think there is a certain philosophy which this government is pursuing and that is what I've always, uh, we've always termed as the three C's. That is commercialization, communalization and centralization. And it is these three which is the ideological motivation for all the changes in the sphere of education, particularly higher education. In the name of this change of abandoning UGCs, you are giving a big push to private institutions. Education is being reduced to profit-making shops that are opening up and it is these shops irrespective of the quality of education that they give that they are catering to a large section of our youth who are unable to get admission in quality institutions. So this commercialization or privatization is also the prescription of the World Bank, IMF and the international organizations where under the WTO negotiations education is termed as a service which is a commodity. So world trade in services in that gamut education is now included which means foreign universities automatically can enter what they teach, etc., is not the prerogative of the concerned country. So we lose control 
over what is being taught and education should always be in conformity with the constitutional values of the Indian Republic. This is being assaulted through the first C, that is commercialization, privatization, etc. The second one is the centralization. Now, in our country, there are 384 out of these 850 universities, 384 universities are what is called the universities of the states, so the state university. They are established by the state governments. And the state governments, right and control over these universities is now being removed through this new bill, which talks in terms of the Higher Education Commission of India. So it's a direct attack on federalism, on the attack on the rights of the states, and education in our country, those of you who are familiar with the constitution will know education is in the concurrent list. It is not in the state list nor in the centre list, but is in the list where both the state and the centre have to jointly play a role. By this introduction of this new bill to replace the UGC, this is an assault on centre-state relations and particularly the rights of the states in the field of education. State legislatures, state, uh, state governments, legislatures, their right. Like JNU, uh, Delhi University, Jamia Milia, and your Aligarh, these are all central universities on the basis of legislations adopted by the parliament. State universities are adopted by legislations of the legislature. Their rights are now under attack because they fall under the purview of this centralized act or body. The third C, communalization, this is the crux of the entire changes in education that is happening. In the urge to undermine the secular democratic character of the Indian Republic and to replace it with the RSS fascistic vision of a Hindu Rashtra, <coughs> what is required is to control control the education and the value systems imparted to our youth. So the whole effort is to change the curricula, change the administration of education, whereby the study of history in India is, is being reduced to the study of Hindu mythology. That is why every single minister, including the Prime Minister, always talks of Indian history in terms of Ramayana and Mahabharata. That is the foundation of Indian history. They want to reduce our syncretic culture. I mean, thousands of years of confluences, of civilizational confluences that have come in here and the various streams of intellectual and the philosophical thought. All that is will be erased in order to straitjacket it into what suits the Hindutva agenda. The study of Indian philosophy is sought to be reduced to the study of Hindu theology. In ancient uh, India, even the most right-wing uh, person accepts that there were six schools of philosophy, of which four were materialist. And you had our own religions, Buddhism, Jainism, later Sikhism, all born here, different uh, variations, different philosophical and theological, you know, uh, histories. All that will be erased to talk only of Hindu theology and Hindu theology. Now, this is the ideological project. And this is what is, uh, I would term as an assault on reason. Reason and rationality is being assaulted today by this Modi government and that is sought to be institutionalized by bringing such legislations in new bodies. The final aspect of this is that in higher education in India or for, the, for that matter the whole of education in India, there is an eternal triangle in which we need a balance and that is between quantity or access to education, quality and equity. This bill attacks 
metaxed all three of them, but basically the equity aspect. The question of accessibility of higher education to the marginalized and the weaker sections in our country is going to be very adversely affected, where only those who can afford higher education will receive it. That is, you pay for your higher education in your private institution. So instead of getting a balance between quantity, quality and equity, what is being done is to not merely disturb this balance, attack the access to education for your Dalits, your uh, scheduled tribes, your uh, other backward uh, castes, and in this way promote social inequality and inequity. So it doesn't address the basic question of this equity, I mean this balance of this triangle in all the three corners. So this is why we are firmly opposed to this. It's not merely one legislation, but this is changing the character of the way Indian youth are going to think. It is an assault on their thought process, it's an assault on reason, and instead of rationality being promoted, and what we talk in our constitution as the promotion of scientific temper. This is the word our constitution of India uses. The state's endeavor will be to promotion of scientific temper. Instead of promoting scientific temper, what is being done is complete communalization of the education system. So what the CPIM has decided that in parliament we shall oppose the bill in this form. We will pray for it, we will press for it, that if at all the government wants to go ahead with it, then it should go to the Parliamentary Standing Committee with a wide, widespread uh, discussion with all the stakeholders. And only then we should come to a conclusion on whether to accept this bill or not. Secondly, we have uh, decided that with all the other like-minded secular democratic political parties, intellectuals, educationists, the teaching fraternity, the students, we shall forge a broad platform to oppose this uh, move and to oppose this entire effort to control higher education in India, to achieve their ideological project of transforming the secular democratic Indian Republic into a rapidly intolerant fascistic Hindu Rashtra, as I would call it. In order to do this, what effort they are making in order to oppose that, a broad platform will be forged and we shall take the, take the issue to the people and to build up a popular movement against this. So that is what I right? This is Comrade Nilotpal Basu, all of you know. Huh? He is a member of the Politburo of the CPM and he looks after our teachers and the students uh, uh, in the party. So, and therefore, on all issues concerning education, and he's got a Told you, play. you want to say something? No, actually, uh, you see the figures themselves are revealing. I will just give you a stunning figure. Uh, last year's NEET examination results for uh, entry to medical colleges, we had, uh, uh, I will give you the exact figure, less than 50% of the seats was filled up by students whose rank went up to 60,000. So beyond 60,000 those ranks were there, they had filled up more than 50% of the medical seats in the country. This is a story in Times of India today. So this whole uh, talk about uh, meritocracy and uh, this admission test and all that, and opposition to the policy of positive discrimination through reservation, this is a sham. And uh, money can buy anything in this country today, and that includes the most coveted uh, educational programs. But the problem is that that is not leading to employability. Uh, 1986, we led a big campaign against Rajiv Gandhi's uh, uh, new education country. policy and our main question was at that point in time they were saying that uh, quality of the students uh, is such that they are not employable. Uh, 
uh, and in that name they tried to restrict and funding etc. was only of uh, uh, further accentuated elitist direction. But uh, we found that uh, the problem is with employment generation. The problem is not with uh, the nature of education and uh, today also all these mushrooming of private uh, educational institutions, particularly of uh, professional uh, education, because 2005 this private university bills came, and after that the uh, explosion of uh, private uh, universities and private colleges, particularly in the sphere of professional education. Uh, today, uh, our banking crisis is also related a large amount of fund this so-called educational entrepreneurs have taken and they cannot pay back because nobody is going to uh, sell their land and uh, send their children to educational institutions because at the end of the day they don't get a job. So sure. instead of addressing the real problems that is faced by our uh, uh, young people, I mean who were being inspired in a big way that there will be a major change ushered in after the 2014 government was formed. Uh, they are in smithereens and therefore now they have started all these things. And the government really has not come forward with any argument why they are replacing UGC with this new high power higher education commission. Yeah. That is what I said, why? Uh, <laughs> so, 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 on that question, is there is no answer. That is the Hindutva agenda. And, and therefore, uh, we have to oppose it and we also appeal to all of you that uh, unlike other issues, I mean, we would expect that you would also take the message to the people because, uh, you see, it is so, so grave a challenge that for us alone uh, to reach out to people would be impossible. So, uh, I mean, proper uh, discussion and discourse must take place in the mainstream media.